everyone, and welcome to the very first show of SG Now. I'm Darren Lim. And I'm Evelyn Lim. Indeed, we're your hosts for this very first inaugural show of our brand new community channel, Singapore One, where you are our focus, the people in HDB estates and private housing estates. And farms. Yes, and condos and homes. And old folks' homes. Yes, and all other residential homes. Do you always have to have the last word, dear? Oops. Well, <laughs> like what they say, happy wife, happy life. Well, for the last six months, even as we were all so anxious and worried over the COVID pandemic, we've been working hard behind the scenes to bring you stories of happenings in your neighbourhood and on topics that interest and matters to you, your family and friends. That's right. Stories that take a deeper look at issues and policies. Stories on how people deal with common fears and anxieties. Stories where we share significant good times and bad times together. And stories that celebrate our rich diversity and spirit. Our citizen journalists, or City Joes as we like to call them, lived and worked in the community. We have taken them from all walks of life to represent an inclusive Singapore. And today, let's come meet some of them. Hi! Well, in case you do not know who I am, I'm actually known as Sunshine, but actually my full name is Belinda Sunshine. I'm quite a naughty person. Although I've worked with people in the media for many, many years, but to me, I still like to play around, be mischievous, and at the same time also, you know, learn more about other people. Because I don't want people to know so much about me. I mean, what's so great about me? All I know is that I'm a girl, I've been working for so many years, and I love music. So my name is Bruce Stevens Matthew. I am 52 this year and I am a Eurasian, born and bred in Singapore, half Chinese, half French. And one more thing, do not let this Caucasian looks fool you. You know why? Very simple. Alright, thank you. And then, sama pun bang nak pergi mana ni? Datang dulu, belum habis. Oh, so, I'm so sorry. Uh, just wanted to call my friend back. Hi, I'm Chris. Uh, I'm 46, though I know I don't look like 46. Okay, uh, I'm now studying my, for my master's and i come a long way since. I've been in prison for about 17 years. I was a triad member. I did international drug trafficking. And now, I'm a huge advocate of against drug use. I'm Morag, Morag McGee. I don't let people call me by my first name unless they know me really well. I think it's rude, okay? I prefer Madam McGee, but I'll go with Mrs. Lim if you can't manage McGee. I have lived here for 40 years and I am still the foreigner in the room and it burns my soul. Hi, uh, I'm Kathleen. I'm, I was born in the US. Uh, I came here to study when I was about uh, seven years old. I lived here since primary school and uh, um, I think mid-secondary school I went back to the US to continue my studies. I would say I have more Asian experience but I do have um, brief American experience as well and I feel like both cultures are so different. My name is Darmik. I am a Singaporean Indian, not typical as you can tell. I personally enjoy playing games a lot. I'm also a huge foodie that we thanks to my parents and my family. We love food so much. Hi, uh, I'm Carson. Uh, I work as a tennis coach, right? I'm a tennis coach and a magician. I stopped work full time in 2012, right? Uh, roughly just after my son was born. Yeah, and uh, basically I just wanted to spend more time with my kids. Hi everyone, I'm Shahira and um, something you need to know about me is I've been a preschool teacher for the past five years and I think it's time for a change and that's why I'm here right now. And i um, not trying to toot my own horn but um, if you were to ask me what my friends would describe me as, the three things that come to mind would be loud, funny and also very reliable. Hi, Hi everyone, my name is Nicholas. I'm born and raised in Singapore. I'm a 24-year-old living in Woodlands. I did a lot of like community work there, so a lot of my neighbours will definitely remember, uh, recognize me, I'd say. And uh, yeah, as, as time goes on, I'm, I just want to share a little bit more about myself. Uh, three words that people would describe me, let's put it as annoying, loud, and uh, lovable at the same time. Hi everyone, I'm Leo Cavalius. I moved to Singapore 15 years ago, and during the last six years, I've been a Singapore citizen. 
when I attended the National Day rehearsal over at the old stadium, I felt a very electrifying atmosphere and I said to myself, I'm going to stay here as long as I can. Hi everyone, my name is Abby. I am 33 years old. I was born in Hong Kong, raised in Singapore. I have been here for 32 years. Sometimes girls, if you're on your way home and then you meet some dangerous people, but then you're very scared. You're not as strong as a dangerous person. How? I tell you what, you take off from here and then you ninja. Right, so when you see them in a the neighborhood, do say hello because they are a very warm and friendly bunch of people. Well, today we'll be starting with a rather thorny subject. You know, people either hate it or they love it. And it restricts you to the parts of Singapore that you can travel to. Oh, I knew it. You're going to talk about the durian I bought last night. No, it's about vaccinations, specifically new restrictions for unvaccinated people. Now, some of the online discourse about these measures has gotten pretty strong, just like the smell of durian. Oh yes, the smell, the aroma, the stronger, the better, it's so mouth-watering. Oh, and it's good for your health, yeah? Really? Mm hmm Sure. Well, our citizen journalist Belinda Sunshine took to the streets with her fellow City Joes to find out what Singaporeans think about this new measure. Since October the 13th, if you have not been vaccinated against COVID-19, you no longer can enter the shopping malls. I know it's a pity because many of the amenities are all located inside the mall. What about young children and elderly people? If they cannot take the vaccine at all, then what can they do? So do you feel that it's not very fair? My city, Joes and I will be hitting the streets to find out more. People who are not vaccinated will not be allowed to enter shopping malls. What do you think of this new measure? Protect everybody, lah. this one. This one good one. I feel that it's very sad because they don't even have a choice. I feel bad for them, but I guess it's necessary. I think it's the right, right decision because um, I, I used to be fearful for a lot of my friends also, including like my girlfriend also. She's like, she used to go through malls, uh, the times when she's not vaccinated. Good, huh? protect us, huh? okay. protect those from vaccinated. Huh? In what other ways can this protect those people who are vaccinated? Don't let the unvaccinated go out. Huh? Yes, I agree. Because the person, the people who is not vaccinated shouldn't come together with the person who, who is vaccinated. I think uh, it's a way of the government to protect the unvaccinated people because I think they are more prone to a serious illness like You cannot force it down the throat though Especially for the elderly, I know they are quite resilient to vaccination You can't just lock them up in the home I think they'll go crazy Safety measures is like a little messy See right now when we are trying to have like social distancing We are trying to practice it We practice it over here but there's no much of practicing inside the MRT or inside the buses or especially inside malls. Do you think this is a way for the government to punish unvaccinated people? Mm, no, I don't think so. I think it's really a way for them, the government to protect them, la, to uh, ask them to, uh, to avoid those crowded places. Do you feel that this is like an unfairly kind of punishment for people who do not go for vaccination? Mm, no, it's not unfair because if you want to like be a as safe as possible from the virus, you should at least get the vaccine. I mean, everyone have their own like opinions, right, about the vaccine. So like, too bad for you uh. If you have your own opinion, then maybe you can't do this. Not at all. It's the choice of the, yeah, especially the older generation. Is their choice because sometimes they thought that whether they they want to take the vaccine or not, still they got the virus. That is their mentality. Whether it's uh, effective in terms of the vaccine is effective or not, that's secondary. But be safe first. They are not punishing. Uh. Why do you say so? Because they have the chance to go for vaccination, they don't want. So do you feel that it's fair that the government has imposed this new ruling? Fair. Uh, to not allow people who have not vaccinated go out shopping? Yeah, fair. Some really, it's not their choice that they don't want to be vaccinated. Like I said, health reasons and then the young ones. There are some people, you know, who actually are eligible for vaccination, yes. but they refuse. This is your body, your choice. You cannot force it down your throat either. 
because whatever vaccination or anything that you put in your body there's always a chance of there's a slight chance of side effects whether they are anti-vax for other reasons that that one is a bit extreme lah. I mean, it's, it's still your body, your choice. They should not be they should not be penalised. This group of people. There are certain people who may not be able to take the vaccine mm. because of health problems, mm. allergies, or even young children. Now, what can the government do to help such people since they are not allowed to enter the malls? <laughs> uh, such cases, uh, then I think the best answer to this is patience. <laughs> Because I don't see the need to actually rush into going into malls. I, I don't see the urgency. Give them some pass so that they are allowed to go into to like places where you have to be vaccinated. I mean, there should be, I don't know, exclusion measures for them, I, I, I believe. Oh, my own grandma, my own aunts, they all have their own health conditions. They are not able to enter malls. But so be it. I mean, we are there for them. We are there for oh. them. For those who have not gone for their vaccination, take advantage of it. Otherwise, you won't be able to go shopping. You won't be able to go and eat and dine out with your friends. This is Belinda Sunshine, City Joe for Singapore One. Thank you, Belinda. It seems that, you know, the new measures have really hit Singaporeans where it really hurts, the shopping. You know what? I really don't mind being banned from this six hour long shopping trips for the rest of my life. Uh, I really don't quite understand how you ladies do it. It's so illogical. It's perfectly logical. You know, we get stressed at work, we come home, we see a messy house, we tidy up the house, we look after the kids. So we need to get away from it all. We shop. And better still, if our husbands could pass us a credit card, then it would be really stress-free shopping. Well, well, um, let's move on to the next story. It's actually about this ex-offender who has managed to channel all his inner energy into something incredibly beautiful. And now he's teaching others to do the same. City Joe Chris paid his friend Barry Yao a visit. Hey Singapore, this is your City Joe Chris for Singapore One and we're here today at Commonwealth to see one of my longtime friends, Barry Yao. He's the owner of 517, an art gallery and he's an international artist. Well, let's meet the man and see what he has to say about himself. My name is Barry. Uh, I'm a full-time artist. I'm a volunteer for uh, as a prison art, artist mentor for Visual Art Hub in prison and also I'm also a volunteer for We Care Community Services as well as uh, other halfway houses. My last stint with the law was uh, 2008. All right. I was arrested for two counts of armed robbery and, uh, and of course uh, drug abuse and consumption. All right. So uh, during that time, so I was sentenced to 10 years imprisonment and 12 strokes of cane. All the while, I have been destroying. So I destroyed my relationship, I destroyed people's trust, I destroyed all right, my, even my dignity as a person, as a human. So I almost lit I literally destroyed everything. That year, 2011, prison had art competitions. And then uh, during that event, I also got an award for that. Therefore, the pre after when I got my award, all right, during that year, prison actually sent me to, to attend the uh, 24 lessons of uh, basic art lessons okay, in visual art hub in prison. That's where I embark my art journey. Right? Is that I no longer want to destroy but create. At that point, I made a decision that uh, I'm not going to go back again. I'm not going to go back to prison again. And then as an artist, I we, one of my ambitions or wishes is that I want to have my own space and so that with the space I can reach out to more people right actually has emotional issues so I want to have some privacy all right and also give them a, a, a place all right that they can practice their art as well and to become a, a sanctuary of their own yeah I'm a co-founder of canvas canvas was officially started 2019 and the reason why we started is that we want to provide an aftercare where they come out, you know, there's someone who with which like-minded and interests, ideas, right? We want to give them a, the support and as well as a, a space where we can all co-create rather than co-destroy, you know? We want to provide a training as well. Training in the sense that not just in skills, but in values, 
Okay, but most importantly, using art as a medium to shape them to be a contributing, not just a citizens, but also an impact to the society. I think the toughest is when the people I reach out to, right? Where uh, it's not that they don't respond, you know? I think I've encountered one experience, right? One of the toughest one that I reach out to, he actually committed suicide, you know, at the age of 21. One of the toughest things that I need to handle is, right, not just once, it's in fact almost daily, is to how to filter the the, the pain, how to filter the, all the negativities that I encounter almost daily. And how do I overcome is kind of prompt me to uh, went all the way to UK to took up art psychotherapy workshop, came back differently. And through the workshop, I also learned how to, you know, handle my own emotions and negativities. Also, you know, P-A-I-N. So if you add a T, so it became a paint. So I use it, I vent it on painting, right? So I, I vent my anger, I vent all the frustrations and I also vent all my pain uh, and translate it into my painting. So that's one good channel that I used. And, and I use the same method, right? To provide the same avenues for my students as well. Never forget that you have the power to create, you have the authority to create, and even if you have the space to create. Uh, create is not just in terms of physical, but also the mental creations, right? Because everything originates from a thought. Don't give promises to yourself. Give one decision. Okay. As long as you have breath, you have hope. And from 517 together with Barry, this is your City Joe Chris once again for Singapore One. Barry Yao is so talented. Well, if you'd like to see more of his paintings, you can visit him at his studio, 517 at Commonwealth. Well, that was a visual feast for our eyes and now food for the valley. Chimmy Chin was an old traditional bakery in Katong. Besides bringing back old favourites like kaya toast and cream horns, they've added new surprises like brownies and gula malaka coffee cakes. But that's not traditional anymore. Well, it's under new management now, but they've made an effort to recreate old flavours people remember, so that's traditional enough for me. Well, anyway, let's join our City Joe Morag at Chimmy Chin, where she's busy queuing for a sumptuous breakfast. Hi everyone, I'm City Joe Morag McGee and for the past few days I've been keeping my eye on the long queue snaking out and along from the Chin Mi Chin Bakery on East Coast Road, which after a lapse of several years has reopened its doors to the public. You're queuing very early outside Chin Mi Chin. Why? Because they are renowned for the traditional coffee and, and toast. Mm -hmm. They have a very long history. They have been closed for quite a few years. What are you planning on ordering for breakfast this morning? The, the coffee and the half-boiled eggs and um, the traditional toast. A mix of nostalgia and curiosity seem to be the main reasons why people have been dropping in. The bakery has always stood out at its corner location with a distinctive blue and red exterior and never more so than now when it has been faithfully restored. The indoor seating area remains true to the old world feel long-time customers will recognise. The marble top tables, the tiny green floor tiles, contrasting black and white tiled walls illuminated by vintage lamps and ceiling fans help create the illusion of a bakery from another time. The clatter of cups and dishes reminds me that there are more important things to focus on. The food. Most of the classic pastries have been revived. A lot of tweaking of the recipes has gone on behind the scenes as duplicating old flavours with modern ingredients is not as simple as you might imagine. The justly famed kaya is available, likewise the charcoal toasted buns to slather it on, cream horns, fairy cakes, suji cakes, stuffed buns, both sweet and savoury. I see you've gone for the classic kaya toast and eggs breakfast. Why is that? Because traditional, it's been 
here from the beginning. Um, it brings back some memories. We've been here from the time that we were babies. We just lived down the road in the past. Yep, it just brings back a lot of memories. Uh, memories. Uh, I used to come here when I was younger. Along with memories, it seemed to me that soft-boiled eggs and kaya toast were the most frequently ordered items. There was, however, one pastry that got me thinking. Is there a correct way to eat a cream horn? I thought my hypothesis needed further research, and as stocks of this favourite were already sold out, I decided to make some cream horns myself and carry out a little survey. What do you want me to do? I want you to, I want you to answer a question for us, Joe. What's the proper way to eat these? I'll eat the bottom first, so let it come through. <laughs> <laughs> then go ahead. Can I? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Excellent, yeah. yeah. Most people do it from the top, I know. Yeah. That's the way I would do it. <laughs> Go from the bottom up. <laughs> <laughs> from the top. You think? Yeah, you try. Try. Mmm. Good. I wasn't convinced. Maybe I should call a friendly chef for his opinion. What do you think is the best way? the correct way to uh, eat a cream horn? I wouldn't say it's the correct way. I mean, I'll just go by mine. I mean, the way I would eat it, I would eat it in a, a whole bite. Uh, meaning that you would get like a bit of the pastry, a bit of the cream at the same time. I, I think it just comes to a personal choice. I mean, it, some people like the crust better, some people like the, the filling bean, the, the custard better. I mean, for, me, for me, it would always be, I would like to eat everything together. I mean, that's why I would, Just, I, for me, I would go for the top. The cues have gone and I have no answer. I'm still confused. I consulted the chef, I spoke to my peers, I listened to the opinions of all the customers at Chin Mi Chin, and I am none the wiser. But I've decided the only way to know for sure is to eat as many cream horns in as many different ways as I possibly can. This is City Jo Morag McGee, much happier and fuller than she was at the start of this report, saying goodbye until the next time. Thanks for the story, Morag, and also thanks to all these cream horns. Mm. Well, I think there's only one way to eat this, and that's bottom up. No way! This has to be from top down. You wouldn't eat an ice cream cone bottoms up, right? Why not? You saved the best for last, so bottom up. No, 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 that's just awful, you know? Anyway, it's nice, whether it's top or bottom, so any angle you eat it is fine. <laughs> All right, there's only one way to settle this. Cream Horn Showdown, tomorrow morning at Chimmy Chin. So, 30 cream horns and one right answer. Wow, there goes my keto plans, but still a happy thought. Now, this is exactly what we ask fellow Singaporeans to share in our street show, One by 30. We ask one question and we get 30 different answers. Like racism is educate them, also to be Okay, that's all. Um, uh, school holidays. Meeting my friends. Work at home. Uh, more closer to the family. Uh, basically, I'm very happy because um, I get to go out with this guy more. Going out with my family. Um, probably the jokes that my friends told me. Eating the new Heinie's chicken burger. Uh, revising for my exam. <laughs> Life is quite sad. I, I buy a lot of clothes online. When doing craft with my children to give teachers. When I see my mom happy, so I love spending time with my daughter, trying all the delicious recipes at home, cooking at home. Spending time with my mother and cooking with her. Hang out with my friends and like forgetting about all my studies and my responsibilities as a student. I'm going to Sentosa this one and with my friends. My friends, really bad jokes. Uh, I'm doing TikTok with my friends. Get to hang out with my best friend. We celebrated her birthday. We just have a lot of uh, conversation that from the from work and everything. So we had a great laugh. Uh, the fact that I'm away from work and also I'm able to spend more time with my son. Oh, this week the thing that made me the most happy was being able to come back from work and sleep. I was very tired. <laughs> so yeah, it was very nice. Going out with Cleo. That her face very funny. <laughs>
making fun of people makes me happy. <laughs> I staycation and go swimming with my family. Seeing my sister fall into the swimming pool. I'm very happy that we've reached 82% vaccination rate and so far no circuit breaker. So that makes me very happy that we're not having another circuit breaker anytime soon, hopefully. See you. I love you. Aww. Hope we get our video soon, huh? Uh, hope that everybody is smiling every day. So you are very important, don't forget that. Every day is a bright day after the rain. Stay positive and yeah, he's strong. Oh, I'm happy. I'm not going to get out of here. So, what's your... Ha <laughs> Sorry, okay, you go ahead first. So, I was going to ask, what was your happiest moment this week? Hmm, it has to be the durian I bought yesterday. Really? Oh, well, the, the, the fact that I'm actually reading together with you, that's the happiest moment. Mm. That's better, because I was going to say, ditto! Yeah. <laughs> well, that's all we have time for you for this episode. Well, we hope that we have helped to create your happiest moment for the last 20 over minutes, and we'll see you very soon. Mm. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye! <laughs>